Here we are. I am Marcus Hall, and I'm here today with Mr. Tim Cox, and we are here for another MN Style Guide Lakeland edition. So here we are, Mr. Tim Cox. How you doing, brother? Good, man. Right on. Oh, look at there. I got some depth today. <laughs> right on. So just to be clear, guys, this is more of me and him talk. We talk all the time. Um, all the time. All the time. So this is more of a, a Mitchell's kind of prayer meeting, chat, all the above. But um, I like to tell the story of I was here, started coming to Lakeland about a little over six years ago, opened a store a little over three years ago, and I kept hearing about this dude, man, you got to meet this dude from Publix, Tim Cox. He's the style dude, man. You're going to love him, and you guys are going to hit it off. And I didn't meet him until, what has it been, four months? Six yeah, months? it seems like it was like uh, maybe November, November of last year. You got it. Yeah, there right you before go. you sent me that Christmas gift. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and I kept hearing the same thing. Right on. Like, you need to meet Marcus. You need to meet Marcus. And it was like, yeah, okay. I mean, we were both like, whatever. whatever right? <laughs> I, I'm sure he's kind of cool, but he, whatever. He's in Lakeland. He ain't going to be that cool. <laughs> and so, but actually, I, when I met him for the first time, he, I could tell he was a little standoff. She was trying to check me out from the perimeter. And uh, then, like you said, I sent him a, a beautiful shawl sweater. And, it was and then, nice. Then he, he called me back. It's like I was courting him. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so, but from then on, cool dude. We play golf together. Uh, but more importantly, uh, I will focus on, obviously, he is a very cool dude. Style is impeccable. I, I could learn and a few things from him. He's a geeked out on style a little bit more than I am. I'm more, I just want to look cool just to look cool. But he's like, and what about this? And what about that? And did you know this? I, I backed <laughs> off on that now. Come on, give me some. So, so, but the things that he do does here, I'm sorry, and I said do, the things that he does here in the Lakeland community is crazy. He knows pretty much everybody here. He worked at the Publix for I worked long? at Publix. How long? For like 40 years. 40 years. Yeah. So longer than I've been alive, almost. I'm just giving give, give or take a few yeah. years. But uh -huh. I'm going to let him introduce himself and how he wants to, and then I'll just kind of chime in because I try to keep these things short. But tell us about yourself, brother. Uh, well, I grew up in Flint, Michigan, met my wife at a small college in Michigan, and uh, she was like, hey, where are we going to live? We're both having this discussion about where, where we're going to live uh, as a married couple. And she had, um, although she's originally from Michigan as well, she had gone to um, high school here in Lakeland. And so it was like, you know, maybe we should move to Lakeland. And I'm like, yeah, let's move to Lakeland, Florida. Now, you have to keep in mind, my images of Florida was spring break in Fort Lauderdale. I've got you right so when I agreed to move to Florida, that's what I thought we were moving to. And we got to Lakeland in 1980 and it was like, wow, this is not really what I imagined. <laughs> um, and Lakeland was dramatically different then, but I needed to get a job and uh, applied at Publix and, you know, landed a job and Rest 40 years, years later, I retired. I know. There you go. So yeah. obviously, it was a good gig, but you you were in marketing, mm -hmm. and so specifically creative. I know. Yeah. So, uh, and around 1990, I had the opportunity to start an in-house creative group at Publix, which is uh, known as Creative Services. So we started that team with about five people, and uh, when I retired, we had. Uh, about 115 people in creative services. So we were, in short, we were responsible for brand expression for Publix. Very cool. Yeah. So I, so when you got to Publix, was there a marketing department? Uh, there was a marketing, shortly after I started, A probably five or 10 years after I started, they did start a small marketing department. So, um, but there was no in-house creative group. So like I said, uh, I was offered the chance to start the creative services department, which resided under the marketing umbrella. So what does that actually mean? Did you do commercials? Did you do labeling, yeah. branding? Did, what did you do? So after we kind of got our feet under us and began to understand really what we 
uh, what we were responsible for, what we had the opportunity to be responsible for. We began to grow our team, and over time we took on the responsibilities of all brand expression, which would include everything from the weekly sales flyer to TV commercials and everything in between, which could be you know, uh, corporate identity, so logos, package design, um, in-store point of purchase materials, store environments, and then of course, you know, in the digital arena, social media, web development, digital. So, so everything, everything public, visual for public. Yeah. Yep. Good. Wow, that's that's huge. So you retired, retired about three years ago. Okay, it's been that long. And uh, was really seeking, you know, what I might do besides play golf and fish after Publix. And um, I approached Catapult, which is, um, you know, if I think most of our, well, I don't know if all the viewers will no, know I'd what Catapult you, is. So. You did that and not in, I was literally going to go. Okay. So then you started Catapult. Yeah. So let's talk about Catapult, which is cool. because that's, that's really primarily what I'd want the viewers and people to understand. And what I love about Lakeland is how they incubate and help businesses grow and really care about the growth of small business. So what is Catapult? Let's talk about Catapult. Yeah, so Catapult is an incubator for startup businesses here in Lakeland. Um, so literally the focus is to uh, have members that want to launch a business and our role is to, to help facilitate the launch of those businesses. So like I said, when I was about to retire from Publix, I was kind of looking for some kind of opportunity, something part-time that would kind of keep me engaged, especially on a creative level. And uh, they were gracious enough to say, yeah, that they, uh, they felt like they could uh, find a spot for me here. So my role here is technically called a expert in residence. It sounds much loftier than it is. <laughs> But I help our members on branding strategies and, and, and marketing strategies. So, so, but I feel like, and, and even in the community, you're much more than that. And for me, I, I, would, I would guess I would call, it's like I just interviewed the mayor, but I kind of feel like you're the mayor. <laughs> Like, and, and are you interested in running for mayor? Absolutely not. Okay, you no. would be good at that, though. I didn't That's think about that. That's a flattering that comment, yeah, but uh, really no, I'm not a politician. I am a connector. Okay, I'm all right. Connector. That's real, which so, goes hand in hand here at Catapult. Yeah, I love trying to connect people. I don't always have the answers, but I typically will know someone who does have the answer. And, you know, I think our relationship has had a lot to do with, aside from, I think you're cool. I like hanging out with people who are cool. You do have good taste. Uh, but aside from that, you know, I have a great appreciation for you being in Lakeland, for you bringing your business here. And I've just, you know, I really tried to do my best to get you connected to as many people and as which possible. Which you have been very helpful in that, as a matter of fact, too. And that I'm grateful. As a matter of fact, thank you for helping me put this podcast together and scheduling all the people. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not that cool here yet. So he had the mayor come. He would not have come if it was not for Tim. Oh. So thank you very much, my brother. You're welcome. Right on. All yeah. right. So Lake, let's talk about it. And, and so one of the things thus far, I hadn't really been able to dig deep into style and, and how it affects the community and first impressions and, and anybody that actually really cares. But um, I'm here primarily because you have actually helped me to be like, hey, they're confirmed that there is a need here in Lakeland, Florida yeah. for, you know, just a men's clothing store. There's a lot of women's boutiques, a lot of women's options, and primarily there's a ton of options for women throughout the country and world, like there's a ton of boutiques, uh, but we're in Lakeland, and, I, and so we don't have a men's store here, and right. so what are your thoughts on, on that, man? What, what, what is, how is that necessary, yeah. or if you feel like it's necessary? So I want to back up a little bit, because my first comments about Lakeland might have been, you know, come off as a little negative. You know, come here from, from the Midwest to uh, Central Florida, and like I said, you know, 40-some years ago, it was like, wow. Now, Lakeland and the surrounding area was very rural back then. Mm -hmm. So you fast forward, 40 some years and it's dramatically different here today and by the way 
My wife and I, we love Lakeland. I, we wouldn't still be here if it weren't for the fact that we love Lakeland. Um, but yes, there is a void, uh, specifically in the area of men's fashion or menswear. And um, what, you know, what has happened over the last several years is I think that there's, with, you know, with all the growth that we've experienced here, um, with some cultural changes, meaning specifically we do have people that are more interested in fashion or style, including guys. I think we've shifted from guys believing that a uh, Columbia fishing shirt is an appropriate choice for date night. I there's think still we, a lot of there's, there's still, still some of them out of there, that, but yeah. I think we've moved the needle a little bit, but they don't have good choices in Lakeland. Yeah. So it's not uncommon for a guy to reach out to me and say, hey, Tim, I need to get something for this event, this wedding or whatever. Can you point me in the right direction? And I'm left with going online and trying to point them to different places they could go and get this garment or this garment. And then I'm like getting texts from them at that store with pictures like, hey, what do you think about this? Is this okay? And I'm like, man, if only we had a spot in Lakeland where I could just go with a guy downtown and like kind of help them, hook them up now with someone like you. I think it's just a really, uh, it's it's a really great benefit for Lakeland if we have some, since now that we have someone like you here. Well, thank you. I, yeah. I'm excited to be here, but uh, like if you were gonna take a guy or if you were assessing, even the mayor says you came to his house, looked at his closet, it was like, this ain't a color. Like, what are you doing? Like, so you gutted that. So like number one mistake you think guys tend to make in fashion? Um, so number one mistake. Oh, there's a lot of mistakes. So, so I, it's hard for me to rank them, but one is fit. Yeah. So I was going to say the, that would be it, man. So and, and I've seen the fit thing kind of change a little bit. So the fit thing used to be in the past that guys would buy stuff that was too big or they would go buy an off the rack jacket, for example, and fail to get it altered appropriately. Mm -hmm. And so what they don't realize is it makes them look sloppy. So the jacket's a little bit too big, it's not fitted appropriately, and then they look slumpy or sloppy. And then their trousers are a little bit too long and they're drooping, they're puddling at, the, at their shoes. And it's just like you, I mean, I'm preaching to the choir with you, but the difference between a well-fitted suit and a poorly fitting, poorly fitting suit, it's just, it, it's... And, and it's not even it's about the fabric. Bad. It's like, right. you can have a lousy fabric, but if the suit fits you well, people will be like, oh man, you look good. Right that's on. like, that's a, yes. so fit is yes. T, like T number one, and then I'd go to fabrics, you know what right. I mean? Obviously in fabrics. Right. And then like you said, on both spectrums, now you've got, guys wearing suits that are way too yeah, tight so and too little like over the last like, 10 years <laughs> we went from you know baggy loose flowing styles to you know skinny yeah and man like some guys have gone way too skinny <laughs> right yes so Agreed. like you know they, they got the jacket, to be right. jacket they button and it's popping button, out right. and, and like sh pants like up to their right, knees right. and yeah, you can see it, their calf muscles right. and the whole deal. So I, I'm with you on that. So I, I think that's probably the biggest mistake that I see is fit. And then, you know, I'm this is this is debatable, but just from my perspective, occasion appropriate. So a lot of guys just don't realize what the right garments are. The appropriate garments for the, for the right occasion, or or appropriately dressing for the occasion, you know, it's sometimes that's missed. And then another mistake I see guys making. Not a mistake, but it's like I believe in treating your your clothing, your wardrobe as an investment. So instead of like spending however many hundreds or thousands of dollars a, a year on the latest fashion trend. And then next year you're like, I gotta get rid of this stuff and you're throwing stuff away, you're giving it away and then you're re-upping. It's like, you know, I, I prefer to kind of treat it like an investment. So at least if some of your garments, a Navy suit, like you're wearing this Navy suit today, which looks fabulous by Thank the you. way. I wore, I wore this jacket for you. I, my other interviews I've had just a shirt on because I knew I didn't want to look like it was 
I was overpowering the, the person, but I knew if I didn't wear a suit, I would look like a slob. So I, I was like, let me put it together for my man. Too. Thank you. Right on, right on. But the point is, that suit is timeless. Right it's on. never going to go out of style. 100%. Right? Yes. So it's like if a guy buys a navy suit and a pair of nice gray you know, wool trousers and a light blue Oxford shirt, He's got a basis for his wardrobe that's never going to go in and out of style. And if it buys good quality, it's going to last him a long time, right? Amen. So I, I see guys kind of miss on that sometimes, too. And I think it's just, uh, for well, while I'm here, out of a lot of times, guys out of convenience. And like you said, they they like, oh, they're thinking, oh, man, that's going to cost a thousand dollars but they wouldn't have to buy another suit for, right. you know, as long as they lived, if they didn't get exactly. too big or too small. Yeah. Whereas they're spending 200 bucks on a really crappy suit that they have to do that two or three times right. a year, maybe exactly. even it depends on the occasion, yeah. whatever the case may be. All right, man, well, I, I like that. that. Now that's enough about the style. Okay. We're gonna get back. <laughs> You sure you don't want to nerd out on that? No, no, that's okay. another whole nother deal. That's okay. like, let's get back to, to business. Now, Lakeland. Yeah. So we were discussing Lakeland and Catapult. And, and so what, where are we at now? What, what do you see like the biggest growth and what makes you happy? And then I'm going to, when you go from there, like talk about things that you look forward to or you wish that uh, would happen in Lakeland. So... I'm very excited about Catapult, not just because it's, you know, a cool place for me to hang out and, uh, you know, talk to people, but I'm also excited about some of the, the businesses that, some of the members that we have in here and uh, some of the businesses that have launched or, or hopefully will launch. And it's, you know, it's pretty diverse from people that have um, restaurants that, um, that they're in the process of preparing to launch. Um, we have people with uh, CPG or consumer packaged goods. So we have Mike and Mike's cupcakes um, that have launched or, and are in Publix now. Um, we've got uh, you know people that have video production companies like our friend over here that's shooting for us today, Jacob, um, Jacob Blair. So. Um, uh, you, uh, you don't have to pay me anything. For that <laughs> He's floor. plugging you. That's cool. <laughs> That's but what you I, do. I'm excited about the members that we have and the opportunity for them, hopefully, to impact the business scene here in Lakeland. Um, regarding what I see and hope for in Lakeland, our downtown is way better than it was 10 years ago, certainly dramatically better than it was 20 or 30 years ago. But I think that we have such a beautiful downtown with great buildings. I am just hopeful and excited that we'll see better retail happening downtown. Yeah, yeah. I think our restaurant scene downtown is pretty good and it's going to get better, but um, there's, there's a great opportunity for better retail in downtown Lakeland. And again, one of the reasons that I'm excited for you to be here, but I'm hopeful that we'll, we'll see more and more retail happen in downtown Lakeland. Yeah, I, I, again, and I mirrored Knoxville, and one of the reasons I'm very comfortable in Lakeland is because I see the potential, and I love like the bringing back downtowns probably, right, right? I right. think that's, you know, the mall kind of took over and the downtowns died. And, and now I love the resurgence of or just around the country and smaller towns and in bigger towns yeah. that they're bringing life back to downtown. But you need, like we talked about this earlier, like what's a reason that people would come downtown? It's restaurants, obviously, and you got 1961 mm -hmm. and you've got a few other good uh, restaurants around here but now there needs to be retail like a right. real reason right. you've got to have some parking right right and then you've got to have living in there kind of hand i see they're building apartments yes. and there need to be you know where people can walk and take public transportation yeah. and there needs to be entertainment i'm fortunate enough that we've got a minor league stadium and being built in downtown and i'm literally right behind right. it but uh yeah that's i i look forward to see lakeland grow man and it's a, it's a beautiful city and it's got a lot of potential yeah i you know, to that point, the the uh, the development and the opening of Bonnet Springs Park on our west side, and the city's efforts and plans to create a greater connection between downtown and the west side, and then the the uh, 
the residential and the potential retail that's going to happen over at Lake Wire, I think we're going to see growth to the west side, which is going to really even expand the, I think, the, the popularity and the desire for people to come down here. So I think we've got great opportunity. I'm excited. I think we have some momentum going. I'm just personally tired of hearing that businesses, potential retailers say, oh, we've looked at the Lakeland demographic and it doesn't make sense, as if to say the retail power is not there. Right. But I don't believe that because yeah. I talk to too many people that say, well, I have to go to Tampa to buy it or mm -hmm. I have to go to Orlando to buy it. I, I think that the customers are here if we get the retailers down here. I agree. Yeah, yeah. And, and do it right and be, invest. And it may not happen immediately, but yeah, if you've got a good product and you you know with right. time, you know, right. and maybe not in six months or a year, but in two three years, you're going to have a following because yeah. I, I agree that there yeah. is a need there, man. All right, on, man. Well, man, I appreciate you for it. It's twenty minutes is over like that. It's like oh man, I mean, we could right? talk for hours. We could right? sit literally, and yeah. we talk all the time, man. But I want to leave you with this, and and this isn't off script or whatever. But since I've met you. I, I, I've really met a person, I know you're really hard on yourself, but I'm gonna say this out loud, that man, you are a really good dude, man. Oh. You're, a, you're a, uh, an example of a father, you're, you're invested in a community, man, and I believe not only my life, but anyone's life that you touch, man, you make it better, bro. Well, thank you very much. And I, appreciate I you, am grateful to have made a new friend in you I regret that we didn't connect earlier, <laughs> like everyone told us that we yeah. needed to. Okay. Uh, but I, I'm I'm grateful to count you as a dear friend, and thank you for having me on this podcast. It's it's my honor and privilege to well, be thank here. Thank you, man, for helping me put it together, brother. I love I you, brother. Love you too, man. Yeah, I know. All right. So after that love fest, there you go. This is wrapping up the third or yeah third episode of the Lakeland edition of In and Style Guy. Thank you for joining us today, and we will see you soon. Bye. Right on.